So they've been talking about the one, a wholehearted commitment, an internal heart shift, reaching, inviting, praying, introducing people to Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to, I've got some helpers that are going to help me in a moment just to demonstrate a little, little bit about how we're set up. Because I think part of my, what I'm here to do in serving both your pastors and according to the mission that God's given you, is to give you a perspective that where this comes from, the motivation to reach people, the motivation to love people. What's the reason you do that? Is it just because it's your Christian duty? Tick. I attend church? Tick. I read my Bible? Tick. I pray? Tick. Those are all great things to do, and they're necessary things to do for people that are in faith. But I don't want you in doing all your tick boxes to miss the actual reason and the person that motivates you to do that. All right, so we're going to do that. I guess because we think it's it's sort of like it's expected that you've already had that place. So today we're going to just build from the ground. We've got, I've got two weeks with you. Well, it depends. If you don't like me, then just let Pastor Stephen know. Then I'm sure he can fill in next week. That'll be fine. Um, but I just really wanted to just encourage you today about the one we can have invitation to someone to come to your your party or anniversary or whatever it is. Not that there's an anniversary party. I'm not making there is, but if you did get an invite. Not that there is one, but if there was one. Everyone's going, I didn't get an invite. Why was I invited? Aren't I important enough? Hold the phone. Uh, if you're invited somewhere, how many of us have good excuses? Like when you don't want to go. You're invited to something. Yeah, sorry, I'm busy. I'm busy not doing that, whatever you're inviting me to. Probably not a good way to say it. Normally we're busy, sorry, got something else on, uh, whatever that is. This, what Pastor Stephen has been speaking about, what your mission is and what you as a church are building towards, that's an invitation. But whether I accept the invitation is another thing. It's probably even more powerful than the invitation. If it's about grabbing the card and going, hey, listen, we want you to this, this year to just to pray about one person and be intentional about connecting with them, just being genuine with them, building a friendship, sharing Jesus Christ, however that comes, because it's part of your story, and then inviting them. And so hopefully having at least 58 or somewhere around that people that by the end, by this year, time next year, 58 other people would be added on to your church because you took on the invitation and accepted the invitation to go, hey, listen, I'm going to reach one person in my life. Because please don't come to church just to listen to a message. The Word of God is too powerful for that. It's transformative. It transforms the way. It renews my mind. Because it it, it might go, you might be having the conversation, oh, that's not how I'm made. It's not my personality. I can't talk. I don't know what I'm going to say. But when I understand, as we're going to jump into Scripture in a moment, as I understand that this is where this is coming from in me, why I'm doing it, the why behind the what, what you'll find is just there is a whole new world of revelation and understanding with God. All right, I need my volunteers to come on up. Uh, I'm going to use you guys. Uh, Let me just see that. So I've got... Eli and Malachi. I asked them, sorry, Pastor, just to stay out of Sunday school for a second. All right. Thank you. All right. So I need a couple more. Young man over here, just there. Thank you. Can you guys see them online? Are they all right? So scooch on over this way a bit, boys. There we go. If you can stand a little bit forward. Fantastic. All right. So do you guys know Eli? All right, and we know Malachi. What was your name? Sorry, bro. Bibi? Hey, Bibi. Hey, baby. I love that name. That's a cool name. Okay, Eli. So imagine this being one person. All right, so this is Eli. Eli's the person. This is Eli's spirit. All right. This is Eli's mind, will, emotions. Okay, imaginations, intellect, all that part. That's called your soul. So spirit, 
Soul, mind, will, emotions, intellect, imagination. And then this is the physical part of who Eli is. Muscles, bun on the head, like just tough looking like a beast. <clears throat> okay, so when we gather around Scripture and when we gather around our Word of God, and just in life in general, we live mainly through this part. My mind, my will, my intellect, my emotions, my imagination. I live through my soul realm. Yep. And I live through my whatever the physical wants, because that tells my mind, my will, my emotions. So if I just go to the gym and pump iron and get big muscles, a bit like my man right here, I'll feel much better about myself. I'll be more attractive to people. Uh, I'll have more confidence. And then this is, okay, so I'm going to have to sacrifice sleep uh, and I'm going to have to like not be able to go out as much because my mind, my intellect, my, my emotions saying, hey, listen, I want to study and I want to, you know, work hard. I want to do that sort of thing. So if I have my degrees, uh, then, hey, listen, you're going to just have to come along with the, for the ride, physical. So you're not going to be able to go out as much. You're not going to be able to do the stuff that you want to do because we're really going to drill down into that space and we're going to get our education, we're going to get degrees, we're going to get our roles and responsibilities. This part right here, before Christ, is just lying dormant. It's there, but it's just a little bit dormant. So then, can I grab you? Yeah. No, 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 the young lady. The one that turned around. Thank you. So this is um, the Holy Spirit and the young man in the second row on the end. Yeah, that's just you. Yeah, you're Jesus. Okay. All right. So there comes a time and when we do the whole thing about, hey, listen, I want to be someone that shares the one. So I might meet someone and talk to them because I'm connecting to maybe something in their mind, will, emotions, imagination or in the physical part of their life. But I'm carrying, I'm a carrier of the Spirit of God that has become awakened and alive in me. So I wanted to share that with them, but I connect at this point. But then I'll share about Jesus. Holy Spirit, can you come on this side? Poor Holy Spirit's on his own over there. On a, yeah, thank you. I shared to them about Jesus. And so then they come to that conversation. Okay, mind, will, and emotions. Oh my gosh, I didn't know, realize, but there's this whole spirit side of me that God wants to ignite. And so then the Holy Spirit, so place your hand on him. Holy Spirit, come here. So that's the word of God, Jesus. How Jesus has stepped into your story. Then the Holy Spirit, like the video we watched, begins to make it life. And then your spirit starts. The heartbeat starts. And the lights get switched on. And that comes to life. That's why the scripture called the Gentiles unilluminated ones. It just meant that their light wasn't on. The light's there. The fixture's there. The switch is there. But it needs someone to turn it on. And so when we turn that on, that lights up. And so then we start this journey of being a disciple where before... My mind, will, emotions tells my spirit and my body what they're going to do. Whether that's study and being studious or whether that's getting involved in stuff that are totally the opposite of who Jesus is or getting addicted to stuff. And that's why God says, hey, listen, I want to renew your mind. But it only comes through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit. That begins to feed your spirit. Your spirit begins to grow. And now it begins to challenge the, the patterns of your mind, the thoughts, the way you think, the way you do life, the way you see God, the way you see church. And in that space, that's the battle. Because this one controls this one. And they both war against this one. And so when the kingdom of God comes, it comes. And then it begins to say, okay, we need to renew the way that we think. 
we need to renew the way that we act. And it all comes from here. My question to you in this space, how much is this getting of Jesus? How much is this getting of the Holy Spirit? Because that's what makes this grow. Because if I'm feeding this more and I'm living in this space more, this is not going to grow. So my mind's not going to be renewed. The Word of God is not going to be alive. I'm going to be discouraged. I'm going to live in unbelief because what I'm doing is I'm saying, mind, will, emotions, you're the one that's in control. Imagination. And so when I look at Jesus without the Spirit of God, we can come to church every week. We can serve on teams every week. But if I don't have relationship here and here, this is not alive. So then I serve out of duty and obligation and of religion and, and routine. And I never have a revelation of him. I have a task mentality. My body turns up early for practice. My body serves in the kitchen or wherever at the dinners. But I just do it out of routine. It's expected of me. When God ignites my spirit, put your hand on it. Then my spirit tells my mind, my will, my emotions, my imaginations, hey, this is what we're going to do. And there's a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of back and forth. Like you just put your hand back to him and yeah, I'm going to fight you, mate. No, I'm not going to do that. But eventually, my mind starts to be renewed. My perspective changes. And then my body follows. Yeah? When I have a revelation of him. This could be about healing. This could be about a gift that God's given you. Whatever that is. What is God saying to your spirit? If you're not positioned for it, it'll never happen. You'll live here and you'll live here and never have a revelation of who he is. So C3 Fremantle, that's the crux of my whole message. Let's just give these amazing people a, a moment. Just to, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Does that help you? All right. So the picture of that right now is the encouragement, the invitation by God, through Jesus, that is ignited by his spirit, is to go, hey, listen, would you tell that one about me? Would you show that one about me? Mind, will, and emotions, that's not who I am. I can't do that. I don't know what to say. Da, 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 da. And we give our reasons why not. But if we will step and go, you know what? Be quiet. God, what are you saying? What is your word saying? That's what I'm going to step out on. So when you step out on that, God does something amazing. Turn to your neighbor and say, honey, hands. And then we'll get into scripture and then we'll be done in about an hour. I have this really great message prepared for you. So honey, hands. Honey, hands came about... By, I received a call from another lady that was working in an agency similar to what we do with Love Langford, do meals for community. And um, similar to your lunch that Charlie and the team run. I'm not sure if it's Charlie, but I think it's Charlie. Um, and I got the call. She was a connect connection to a, a Christian friend. She's not a Christian. I haven't met her, don't know her. Just given our numbers out, we were contacting each other. As I rang her, her name is Kate, as I rang Kate, Kate was really very nice. I was just, hey, Kate, it's Clint from C3 Langford, began to explain who I was and what we do. And she said, oh, I'm sorry to cut you short, but I'm just on the way to the hospital. My husband just has had a burst aneurysm in his, in his brain um, and they're needing to do surgery and they're needing me to get there as quick as I can because they're not sure he has a 50% chance of living. And so she, you can imagine, then you could hear the emotion in her voice. She was crying. I said, no worries, Kate. Uh, you please take care. As I'm about to hang up, I have a picture 
of a big honey pot and two hands being dipped in that. Now, that picture is familiar to me, but that, in that moment it came back to me. So part of what I do every time I minister and every day I step out of life is that I go past like you're leaving your door is I just dip my hands in honey, not literally in honey. The honey represents God's love. It's an imaginary. See, I'm using my imagination. I walk past the honey pot, I dip it in, and I leave the house. So God, everyone I touch today will have the residue of honey on them, your love. Okay? And so that's why you'll see me if I, if I greet you, I'll either shake your hand or touch you in some way, just letting you know the backstory. All right? Just putting the love of God on you. I get this picture of this, that, that, my honey pot and my honey hands on the phone while I'm, she's about to say goodbye. In that moment, in that split second, I've got to go. She doesn't know me. Uh, she's got an emergency. Um, the friend that's connected her to me has told me how she's a bit anti the whole God thing. Could have used all those reasons. Just go, okay, see you, Kate, bye. I said, Kate, just before you go, and then I'm embarrassed already at myself. I said, before you go, Kate, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. That's a conversation in my mind. Before you go, can I just get you to do this? I've got this picture of honey hands. So, and I explained the story like I just did to you. So when you get to the hospital, before you jump out of the car, just dip your hands in God's love and then race to your husband. And then wherever that burst aneurysm is, on whichever side, just lay your hands on it. I know, wow, in church, in my office, you have lost it. You are crazy. You, something's wrong with you. She's going to tell your friend and your friend's going to go, Clint, what did you do? I was trying to reach this lady. Now you've just blown it apart. And because it's one of those awkward moments. Like there's no, oh, great, awesome, that's great, Clint, thank you. It's quiet. Okay, I'll, I'll see you later, bye. So then the whole afternoon you're just going like, oh, oh that sick feeling. Uh, that night, oh, sorry, the next day, all I get uh, in my messages in, in uh, Messenger is a honeypot, two hands, emojis, and it works. And I've gone, huh? <laughs> then I realized, oh, this is, because I later found out his name's Clint. Clint, they were astonished by, the doctor said, they went in, they did the surgery, were astonished to see how that hadn't spread like it should have spread. And they were able to save his life. Um, and then last Christmas, without me, I haven't met him. I only met him last Christmas. This is a year apart. We're having our Christmas dinner. He comes to the dinner. I think he's just a volunteer from the community introducing. He says, oh, I'm Clint. Hi, Clint. I'm Clint. Ha, ha, ha. Joking about that. Two good-looking Clint's ha, in one room. <laughs> he's much better looking than me. And then he says, oh, my wife thought you wouldn't recognize me. And he said, honey hands. And then I'm crying and grabbing this big, tall, muscly beast of a dude with hair. And I'm hanging on to him because in that moment, God healed and touched him. When you go beyond your mind, will, emotions, imagination, and listen to what the Spirit of God saying to you, the adventure on that side is you'll have honey hands. It's like the video you saw, Lenny Kravitz. Two kids. Speaking about Jesus. Talk. He listens. They ask him about and talk to him about Jesus. Changes his situation. All right. All my examples are done. Let's go to the Word of God. Oh, my gosh. I'm normally a Word of God first person and then we go. I know we've run out of time. Anytime you want to say, oh, no, Pastor, you can keep going to us. No. I know we've got to get to it next, next service. It was just crickets after that. Let's go to Genesis 1 real quickly. This is going to come rapid fire. Okay, so part of, part of boot camp, part of this is training ground. This is equipping moments. Please, if you can, make notes, write down, do whatever. But don't, don't let it sit and just go and then you forget about it next minute because the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide spirit and the marrow and the bone able to divine the intent of man's heart and also spirit. So God's word is able to do transform amazingly in your world. So let's take the word of God at the word of God. 
All right, Genesis chapter. What do you say? Genesis chapter 1. 26, 27. Then, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. And let's jump down to 27. Uh, so God created mankind in his own image. All right, we know that? All right, turn to your neighbor and say image. In the image of God, he created them. It's really important. We don't have time to go into it. But when things are repeated, God is actually emphasizing. It's like bold in you when you're writing an essay or something like that, or underline. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male, female, he created them. And God blessed them, etc. Let's jump to chapter 2, verse 7. So God created them, Adam. God's having this amazing time with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He says, oh, hey, listen. What I really feel in this moment of love, of giving love, receiving love, because that's where they exist, because God is love. And they're saying, hey, listen, in this moment, in this connected closeness of who we are, that my mind can't imagine, he says, let us make man in our own image. Let us make man exactly like us. And then verse 7, he says, then the Lord God formed a man. So hang on a second. Chapter 2 now, chapter 1, he creates him. In chapter 2, he forms him. Formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed on him in the nostrils and the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Because in chapter 1, he created him. So that God is spirit. So he created man. The image of God was spirit. And then within that, now he forms him from the dust of the earth. And he basically places form, body, soul, spirit, into to the spirit of God, into the clothing of the Godhead. Okay, so you get that? Jeremiah 1.7 says this. We won't have time to do before, that. Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Before you were formed, I'd already designated you to be a prophet to the nations. So Jeremiah, before you were born, I already knew you. Then I formed you, Jeremiah, and I've designed you for this reason, for this purpose. C3 Fremantle, God already knew you before the foundations of the earth because Church is not where you go to. Church is who we are. We understand that. So each and every one of you have a story in God. And the Bible says, Psalm 139, every day of your life was recorded before him, before even one began. So God already knows who you are as individuals, as a church. And he has formed you for a specific task, for a specific purpose, and he's placed his spirit over you, and he has formed you for, to design for you to fulfill the purpose that you were designed for. All right, so again, just going really hard. So let's go. So Luke chapter 19, verses 10. So then we know Adam, the fall of man, and all of that sort of thing. In the garden, when Adam sinned, what he lost wasn't his form. What he lost was the clothing of the Spirit of God. Because Jesus comes looking, Adam, where are you, mate? Adam, Adam, Adam. It's not that Jesus didn't uh, know where he was because he knew but it wasn't in the form that he was created. It, was, it wasn't in his created being. It was just in the form of that he was designed to. All right, let, let me, let's go real hard. And then we, so with the worship team, if there's someone that needs to come up, why don't you come on up? Um, and we're going to just read real, real quick through these sort of things. Luke 19.10, we know when with Zacchaeus, he says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save. Some versions say the lost. Other versions say that which was lost. That which was lost. What was lost in the garden was the image of God on your life. That's why he says, hey, listen, let your spirit come alive so I can renew that. And then he says, hey, listen, now let me place my spirit in you. Let me fill you with my Holy Spirit. What God is doing, church, is bringing you back to that place of identity, of who you are. The Spirit of God wants you and I to know in this place that whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil, 2 Corinthians 3, guys, sorry for that, 2 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Listen to this. 
And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as they were changed into His glorious image. We have run out of time to talk about all that, but I'm back next week. And we're going to just talk through three aspects of what does it look like to be about the one. We're going to talk about the fear of God. We're going to talk about the love of God. And we're going to talk about the joy of serving God as ambassadors, as Pastor said earlier. But I feel that the Spirit of God wants to just go, okay, Clint, that's okay. That's good for today. To let you know that you're an image bearer of God.